Okay, so let's see what other pieces of information we can get from our spectrum. We learned that our molecular ion peak tells us the molecular weight of our compound. Our molecular ion peak plus one, our M plus one peak, can tell us how many carbon atoms we have in our spectrum. Well, we find that the M plus two peak, or the molecular ion plus two AMUs, can tell us whether we have a chlorine or a bromine. So chlorine has two abundant natural isotopes, chlorine 35, which makes up 76% of naturally occurring chlorine, and chlorine 37, which makes up 24% of naturally occurring chlorine. So molecules that have chlorines have strong M plus 2 peaks because chlorine 37 makes up 24% of the naturally occurring chlorine, and 35 makes up 76%. So that's a 3 to 1 ratio, and what we see is that in fact, our molecular ion peak, which in this case is at 112, would be three times as large as our M plus 2 peak. So this is our M plus peak at 112, and it's going to be three times as large as our M plus 2 peak, which is at 114 in this case. So if we have this 3 to 1 ratio, that's a characteristic pattern for our, for our molecule having a chlorine. So notice that um, that 112 minus 35 for the chlorine would be 77, which is what we have left in this molecule, which is a phenyl group if we take away the chlorine. And, chlor and 30, um, I'm sorry, 114 minus 37 would also be 77, which is what we have left in the molecule in the case we had a chlorine 37 in the molecule. So we have a similar situation if we have a bromine in the molecule. So if we have a bromine, bromine 79 makes up 51% of naturally occurring bromine, and bromine 81 makes up 49% of naturally occurring bromine. So molecules with bromines often have, or, or do have strong uh, M plus 2 peaks. Okay, so the, the molecular ion peak in this case is just a little bit bigger than the M plus 2 peak. So in this case, our bromine weighs 156, or our molecular ion peak is at 156, and then at 158 we have an M plus 2 peak that is about the same height, just a little bit shorter than the molecular ion peak. So if we have this 1 to 1 ratio, then we have a characteristic pattern for a bromine. And so be careful if you see these kinds of patterns that the rest of the spectrum makes sense. So if we take away the bromine, then we have um, in this case 156 minus uh, 79, which is going to come in again at 77 for the phenyl group that's left over. And 158 minus 81 is going to be 77 for the phenyl group that's left over if we had an 81 bromine. So make sure the rest of the molecule makes sense if you see that characteristic pattern because um, uh, it could just be uh, something that looks like a bromine or a chlorine, um, maybe you don't have your molecular ion peak there at all and you might be just seeing fragmentation. Okay, so below we have some spectra. We're going to see a couple of spectra of some different molecules. So we want to see if we have a chlorine or a bromine in these spectra. So this doesn't look like a 1 to 1 ratio, and it doesn't really look like a 3 to 1 ratio either. So I would say we have neither a bromine nor chlorine in this spectrum. Here we have a characteristic 3 to 1 ratio, so we do probably have a chlorine, or we definitely have a chlorine in this spectrum because we have a 3 to 1 ratio for our, it's supposed to be a 1, for our molecular ion peak to our M plus 2 peak. We can get yet another piece of information, or set of information, from our mass spectrum. So if we have a molecule like this, we have, um, pentane, which weighs 72 AMUs. Um, and so what happens if this molecule fragments in the GCMS? So this is a high energy situation where we have a, and in the gas phase, and so this thing is a radical cation, so it can fragment into both a radical and a cation. So if it fragments, then in the, in the case that it loses just a methyl group, 
then we're left with this butyl cation. So the, the 72 um, for the pentane would lose 15 for the methyl group. So a methyl group is 12, 13, 14, 15 AMUs. So this would be our molecular ion peak minus 15 AMUs for the butyl group. If our uh, molecule fragmented right here, then what's it lost? It's lost an ethyl group. So this would be our molecular ion minus 29 for the ethyl group, okay? And so um, in this case, this is a, a propyl group that's going to um, be hitting the detector, right? And so if our molecular ion lost a propyl group, then we're going to have M minus 43. Okay, our molecular ion minus 43. In case, the, in, in this case, this uh, CH2, CH3 here, this ethyl group is going to be hitting the detector. And so, what if we lose 4? So if it fragments right here, we've lost this butyl group, and so that's going to be molecular ion minus 57, where just the methyl group at 15, in fact, would be hitting the detector. So if this fragments, we're going to have a very um, busy spectrum with lots of different peaks on it. So what's it going to look like? Our molecular ion peak is going to be, in this case, very short at 72 because it fragmented a whole lot. So these alkanes are subject to fragmentation. They fragment a lot. Well, why do you think this M minus 29? So this is our molecular ion peak minus 29. Uh, and let's go back up and look at what that 29 looks like. So we've lost a propyl group. So why do you think that's our highest um, or our, our base peak on the spectrum. So why do you think that's the highest peak on the spectrum? Well, it's just statistics. It could fragment here or it could fragment here and in each case we're going to lose a propyl group. So the M-29 has become our base peak in the spectrum. So this would be in the case of a loss of a methyl group here, um, propyl group here, and then we have the um, the M minus 43, I'm sorry, methyl group here, ethyl group here, propyl group here, right, and butyl group here. So if we've lost the methyl, then we've lost the ethyl, we've lost the propyl, we've lost the butyl. So molecular ion peak minus 15, uh, minus 29, minus 43, and minus 57. And we have these little smaller peaks here where they've just lost a hydrogen in addition to that methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl. Okay, so we see lots of fragmentation in this spectrum. So consider the case of this molecule where we have this highly branched end. So that branched end can actually, if it splits right here, if it fragments here into a cation and a radical, we've lost this propyl group here. Then we have this t-butyl uh, cation, and in this case this is a tertiary carbyl cation, so this is particularly stable. So this molecule is going to be more subject to, to fragmentation right here. And so we're going to see this uh, M minus 43 for the loss of this propyl group being our probably base peak in the spectrum. So we can expect that to be one of the, or the, probably the base peak in the spectrum because this is going to form the more stable cation. Now we have some other different types of fragmentation that can occur. An alcohol can fragment, so an alcohol can fragment at the alpha carbon, and that's called alpha cleavage, to give us this resonant stabilized cation and um, the rest of the molecule, which in this case would be um, everything that's past that alpha carbon. So we have this end of the molecule where it fragmented at the alpha carbon and the other end of the molecule. And that's going to vary according to what our alcohol looked like. But one of the easiest way to identify if you have an alcohol in your molecule is just to see if you've lost water. So remember water is very stable and so we can get this gas phase rearrangement where 
um, this oxygen picks up a neighboring hydrogen and we lose water to form this radical cation and that radical cation will be found at the molecular ion peak minus 18 because water is uh, 16 for oxygen, 2 for the hydrogens and so it's going to be M minus 18 or our molecular ion peak minus 18. So if you have an M minus 18 peak then that can indicate that you have a, an alcohol in your molecule. Amines also undergo alpha cleavage to give us the um, this resonance stabilized species here that is where the molecule has broken in half at the alpha carbon. So we're going to have that uh, characteristic pattern. And uh, one that is very common and also easy to recognize like the alcohol is a McLafferty rearrangement. So if we have a carbonyl that can often undergo a McLafferty rearrangement where we get an alkene that um, is the result of this rearrangement uh, plus the uh, part of the molecule containing the carbonyl. So the way this happens is we have this radical picking up a hydrogen here and we have this elimination where we form an alkene between the beta and gamma carbons. So here's our alpha, beta, gamma carbons and so we form an alkene here. We get this elimination uh, and that's called a McLafferty rearrangement. Well, how do you recognize that on your spectrum? Well, this part of the molecule here has an even mass. This has an even mass. So if you see something in your spectrum, a fragment with an even mass, you could consider that maybe you had a carbonyl as your molecule. So that's something to look for and that's the characteristic pattern. Okay, so we can see that these common fragments are loss of a methyl, loss of an ethyl, loss of a propyl or a butyl, or water from the alcohol, or an even fragment that can indicate that you had an uh, aldehyde or ketone from a McLafferty rearrangement.